afternoon and happy Sabbath, friends. Today we are exploring why do little sins matter? First things first, disclaimer alert. There are no little or big sins in the eyes of God. We may use the term to try and equate the act. However, in the eyes of God, he makes no distinction as murderers and liars are painted with the same broad brush in Revelation 21.8. But we know as humans, we tend to make this distinction, so it's important for us to understand. Join with me on this journey as we travel through five points of why little sins matter, where we will use the term little loosely. Well, number one, little sins lead to great ones. Yep, you already guessed it. Muse on this. Satan tempts us with what we believe are small, low-impact, non-hurtful sins. Think about it as the edge of a wedge. Yes, once this part is inserted, he can drive it home and split us from Jesus Christ, which of course is his priority. Satan will start with our mind gradually. He will shoot across our mind a thought and that thought would carry a desire, that desire would carry a look, that look would carry a touch, and that touch would carry a deed. That deed will carry a habit, and a habit of course something worse, until the man from little beginnings, he would be swamped and drowned in iniquity. Little, t little things we say lead to something worse, and it has always been this way. Some examples are, it only takes a spark to set the whole forest on fire. Achan, when he moved the treasures, and the thief who started stealing small things like books, pens, pencils, and then moved on to bigger crimes. Secondly, little things multiply faster and lead to destruction. There's a quick turnover rate. The smaller the feeling of guilt, the more frequent it becomes. So we can liken this onto how small insects like flies and mosquitoes multiply and the horror of the disease and dismay that they bring upon us. So think about the plague of lice and the plague of flies that the Egyptians faced. Now we all know that flies and mosquitoes are really really small creatures. However, at that point in time, they were in great number and caused mass havoc and devastation. These seemingly little sins will be our demise. Be sure to check on your insect sins. Third point, little sins involves opposing a great principle. Think about this for a minute. Imagine the US and China are at odds with each other. It's not too hard to imagine, right? So, the US made a treaty or an agreement with China that says anytime your soldiers come into our land, a war would be declared. So, one day, half a dozen Chinese soldiers decide to show up on US shores. But you know, World War III would be declared. Wasn't this just a little bit of soldiers? Yes, but the principle of a broken treaty remains. This is how it is with God. Once we sin, we violate the principle. We have broken his trust and we have been disobedient. God is dishonored at the slightest inkling of disobedience. Fourth point. Our relationship with Christ is strained by little sins. It is even shredded. Think about a little pebble in your shoe. It can cause great discomfort if you're going on a hike or a marathon. Think about a little cloud that can block the sun. Consider 1 Corinthians 5, 6. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Think about if you put this whole box of yeast. You don't need that. You just need a little sprinkle in your bread. Think about the yearning of a lover missing their spouse or a child missing their parent. We are children of God and we must be yearning for his company. We must ask ourselves, 
what has driven us away from Christ? Is it a wall built by little pebbles? Or a sea which divides us from Christ that may be filled with drops of little sins? These sins push us farther and farther away from Christ. And number five. If little sins are harbored, God will not hear our prayers. Because we feel that it's trivial, we may not place great importance upon it. And we may not even ask for forgiveness and overcoming power because it seems so very small to us. We may underestimate it and thus it might even erode us. If we have sin in our life, God will not hear our prayers. Yes, even seemingly those little sins. In conclusion, there are no little sins in God's eyes. Jesus Christ had to die for all of our sins. If he had not, then we would not have a future of heaven. We must surrender daily to him. And when he has searched our hearts, and presents to us our diagnosis, must we be obedient and open to him as he performs the transfusion and the transformation that we are in dire need of. God bless.